Uh, thank you for coming to my presentation. Uh, my name is Im Ben Su. Um, I'm from Osaka University. So uh, today my topic is about uh, edge data center energy efficiency. So basically, uh, we created a um, implement an algorithm called uh, based on the Kubernetes East called uh, workload allocation optimizer, and together with the machine learning uh, uh, called uh, genetic server power models, also work together to realize the reduce the data center data center energy consumptions. So I will talk about more in my presentation today. And here is my agenda. I will starting to talk about the back, background of this research. And uh, then I will follow, talk about uh, how we implement this uh, workload allocation optimizer. We call it uh, WOW. Uh, it is based on the Kubernetes platform. So you might be also very interested about so how much power consumption reduction I'm talking about for this implementation. And so I will demonstrate uh, uh, based on the real test base data center, uh, which including over around uh, 200 servers. So I will show how much power consumption can be realized based on these 200 servers. OK. So um, let me start in from who are we. So as currently the data center power consumption comes from 2% of the global power consumptions, and it is expected to have around 15 times more uh, for the future uh, 10 years. That's because the, there will be more data center, uh, edge data center created, and also cloud data center, because this is the global trend. So uh, our research group, group is based on uh, NATO Japan, uh, which including a university uh, like uh, Osaka University and several industrial company. And we work together to uh, reduce the global, uh, reduce the carbon footprint from the data center. So the, basically, the method is not only uh, limited what I'm talking about today because the, this topic is about Kubernetes East. Uh, but I will touch a little bit other approach, uh, like uh, uh, how to optimize the air condition control. So um, this will be in my later slide. Okay. So in this topic, uh, we utilize the Kubernetes East to reduce the data center power consumption. The, from the high level, the concept is uh, we built the WOW algorithm, which resides on the uh, edge side data center. So when there's an incom incoming workload request from the MEC side, this WOW algorithm will uh, evaluate which side of the edge side will consume the less power consumption, and then uh, will move the, lose the workload to that edge site. So this is a little bit different from the conventional uh, workload uh, allocation, like a, a Kubernetes way, because it's more likely focused on the performance and the, uh, workload, uh, low balance, uh, that approaches. So um, the how we serve uh, saving the power consumption from server inside the data center. Traditionally, if using the Kubernetes, will be based on the resource availability. So it, Kubernetes will automatically uh, allocate the, uh, your task to the uh, most appropriate servers and based on the overall resource availability. But in our approach, we try to extend the Kubernetes uh, API. So first, we need to uh, build a server power consumption model. So the server power consumption model can predict how much um, server power will increase. So based on this information, then the workload optimizer will uh, use this information to dispatch the workload to appropriate server. So uh, continue with this kind of uh, flow, then uh, we can re realize and reduce the server power consumption in the data center. Uh, I will talk about more detail in the later slides. 
So before that, uh, as I mentioned, is this is uh, reduce the server power consumption inside the data center. And one is uh, one very important aspect is the impact from the data center. Actually, the operation of the data center is also uh, uh, impact for for the server application. As we know, uh, the data center usually has hot I/O and cold I/O and air conditioner. So if this structure is changed from one data center to another data center, that would be have impact of the server power consumptions. So our research consider the infrastructure impacts of the server power consumptions as part of our implementations. So uh, in this slide, you can see on the uh, on your left hand side, um, there are several of parameters which impact of uh, uh, air condition. And on the right hand side, uh, which is the server power consumption. So um, we now know the CPU usage is the main parameter which dominate the server power consumption. But from the environmental, the data center, it also has some uh, impact for the server power consumption. For example, the ambient temperature around the server uh, and also the airflow around the server, which is also impact the behavior of the server power consumptions. So the idea is if we know uh, what is happening uh, around the server, then we can build a genetic model. And that genetic model can be applied in any data center, as long as the we can collect the environmental impact from outside of the server. So uh, usually, this picture shows how we uh, one of the important aspect is we collect the airflow difference. We call it uh, static pressure difference, and this is the airflow pressure difference between the front panel and the back panel. Uh, you at this moment, there is no direct way to uh, collect this information, um, unlike the ambient temperature. M most of server, advanced server, you can directly collect. There is a sensor inside the server, and you can collect the ambient temperature from the server directly. But for collecting the airflow difference, we build our own sensors. So the sensor uh, will uh, we collect the uh, airflow pressure in the front panel and back panel of the server, and we calculate the real time of the pressure difference. Okay, so now I'd like to talk about the actual implementation of the WOW algorithm based on the Kubernetes environment. So also, this is a kind of high level. Uh, so in order to build a machine, machine learning model, uh, we first, we, in this research, we built our own data center. And based on this data center, we collect the uh, operation uh, data every minute. So for example, we have 200 servers in uh, the data center. And we can separate to different edge sites. But uh, in every minute, we do uh, collect more than 4,000 data points because every server contributes different amount of the data. Um, the data is not ready for machine learning. So we have some uh, internal uh, data preprocessing, pre like uh, aggregation. And we can use those data to build the uh, we call it genetic server power model. The term of genetic means uh, it can be applied in different data centers. As we know, uh, there will be more of the edge side data center. So uh, the genetic is very important because you don't have to uh, rebuild your machine learning model. Your machine learning model can be applied in different edge data center. And after that, uh, uh, when we get the machine learning model, we can predict the power consumption dynamic. And this power consumption increasing dynamic can be applied for the workload allocation optimizer. And then use this optimizer to uh, 
assign the task to the most appropriate, appropriate edge site to realize the data center energy reductions. And for the uh, building the machine learning model, we actually utilize because uh, we have a different, uh, we want to try in different environment. Uh, we use PyQuery, uh, this package to build a lot of machine learning models. And the model is uh, actually managed by MLflow. So it has a, a better life cycle management of machine learning model and easy to share with different, uh, our different companies. So we try to different uh, machine, uh, machine learning model because uh, we, the machine model need to be fulfill the environmental of the data center. Okay. So speaking of the power consumption behavior of the server, Actually, uh, we don't know the CPU consumption is dominate most, like 80 or 90 percent of the behavior of server power consumptions. And in our side, we have four type of server. Uh, like three of them is from Intel and one is from AMD ROM. Um, as you can see from these figures, different CPU have a very different power consumption behavior. For example, the Intel Gold, uh, there is a high jump of power consumption increasing pattern from zero to 20% of CPU usage. Uh, but after like uh, uh, 50 to 100% in this area, uh, for speaking of that, if running on the 50% of the CPU and 100% of CPU does not matter too much. So this is the reason we need to customize which type of server based on the different CPU for building the machine learning models. And um, so uh, CPU is one of the important factor, but we also can see the ambient temperature and the airflow stat static pressure difference. So the idea is when the uh, Ambient temperature become higher, the server of power consumption will be higher because the server needed to increase the fan to reduce the power consumption. And when you have higher um, stress pressure difference, which means you have more smooth of the airflow goes into the server, which can help server to reduce uh, um, to reduce the, the uh, hot air to out of the server. So this one can be helped to reduce server power consumptions. So here is the uh, general result of our server power consumption models. So basically, I, this is talking about the accuracy because we need an accuracy model to provide the workload optimizer to do the uh, right dispatch to reduce the power consumption. And basically, we achieve a very good uh, accuracy of the power consumption from different server. The er error of the prediction uh, based on the RMSE is what? It's from 1.2% to 2.0. So uh, like Intel Gold or AMD ROM CPU, which has higher of um, power consumption, behavior is normally has higher error, but still within the several ranges. And we find that the different machine learning model, uh, in our case, we find the tree base, advanced tree base one, like XGBoost uh, perform best in our, um, our research. And also, uh, we also consider, consider the processing time. And this is also a very important aspect because um, when there's a high traffic, we want to allocate the uh, workload as soon as possible. So um, the next I would like to talk about uh, the implementation of the workload optimizer in the Kubernetes. So the comparison between the 
wow and uh, the traditional one is based on the traditional one will be uh, distribute the part to node to approach uh, based on the environmental resources but the our design wow schedule will be dispatch the workload uh, the part to the node based on the nodes increasing uh, server power consumptions. The wall algorithm is actually when we implement into the Kubernetes, we use the default Kubernetes to extend it from uh, uh, default Kubernetes. And there are three phases we uh, consider most important in our implementation. Uh, one is the filter phase, which will choose the uh, all available nodes. And uh, the second one is the score phase. The score phase, in the score phase, we extend the score to be the uh, power consumption base. So this is actually the score from the power consumption server. So because of that, uh, the Kubernetes can know which server should be dispatch the node. And this was happening in the binding phases. Okay, so um, from the overview uh, of the operations, uh, on the hardware platform, we have a server, 200 servers, and we built the uh, Zabbix to collect, continue collect the operation parameters. And also, uh, the actual implementation from the Kubernetes, including the, uh, the first is the core of the uh, function called Cube API Server. API Server is the uh, operation call for the workload optimizer. Then uh, there is another part called Matrix Server, which is uh, responsible for collection of the operation parameter for uh, static pressure difference, CPU ratio, and the ambient temperature. We continue collect those information for the machine learning purpose. So machine learning purpose, machine learning model can predict the how much power consumption increase after uh, if we assign this part to that node. So the wall scheduler knows this information and will based on this information to dispatch uh, the part to node based on the minimum power consumption of, uh, so in each step, we try to minimize the power consumption for the, in the uh, entire computation environment. Um, here is the actual implementation for uh, our WoW algorithm, and uh, it is public in the GitHub repository. So uh, if feel free to, uh, I put all the slides in the uh, website, so you can check it when you have time. Okay, so the next is, um, I want to show you how much power consumption reduction I'm talking about based on these implementations. So this is based on the test bed, uh, test bed of data center for around 200 servers. Uh, but I will only pick on some servers for the demonstration purpose. So first, uh, I want to show uh, the power consumption result. Uh, we have, uh, this is for a uh, server with Intel CPU code. Uh, this server has um, 96 codes, so uh, when the, there is a lower ambient temperature, it will be uh, happening, there is a lower of power consumption. So the prediction model actually capture this kind of behavior, and when also there is a large of uh, static pressure difference, and it will also lower the power consumptions. So based on this Intel Go CPU server, um, if we see this uh, left-hand side figure, um, 
the horizontal is about the total CPU. So here CPU ratio from zero to 100 means um, in this case we have 50 CPU. So 100, uh, 100 CPU ratio means uh, 5,000 cores because each CPU, uh, each server has around uh, 100 cores. So 1,000 of CPU means uh, the data center can handle 5,000 uh, CPU code workload at the same time. The orange is based on the default uh, Kubernetes default allocations, cube scheduler. And the blue line is uh, based on our uh, WoW workload optimization algorithm. So because of this Intel CPU uh, has, it jumped from zero to 20% of the power consumption, and then will become stable after 40 to 100%. So, but the, uh, our wall can take this advantage. As you can see from 20 to 40%, it will uh, increase in the reduction ratios. And um, the maximum reduction ratio in this case is around 51%. So it's actually really depending on how much resource you use in the data center. But this case shows the max one is around 51% uh, 50, of power consumption reductions. Okay, uh, I will jump. So another one is for uh, MD ROM CPU. So this is the power prediction result, it's very accurate. And also for uh, power consumption reduction because of the uh, server power consumption dif behavior different, we will have different uh, CPU, uh, different power consumption reduction result. In this case, is um, the maximum is around 25%. So different server type has different type of power consumption re result, reduction result. The point is, based on the, wow, we can always obtain the power consumption reductions. And in this case, the maximum happen is between 40 to 60% of the total CPU usage in uh, AMD ROM CPU servers. So uh, I think uh, I, here is my summary. Um, I will probably uh, leave for some questions. And the finally, I'd like to uh, thank you for our sponsor, NATO New, in New Energy of Industrial Technology Development Organization for sponsor and support our research. So any question here? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, um, so these models are based on the specific CPU types. Um, can the scheduler get scores or like make scores um, for scheduling across multiple CPU types in a single Kubernetes cluster or does it have to be all the same CPU across that cluster? Oh, yes. So actually this is very good question. So uh, it's the data center. Uh, in, in my demo it always shows single server type, but in real reality, it's mixed. So actually, uh, we have a result, but not here. Uh, if I mix two servers, um, the workload optimizer will always go, uh, will try to find the uh, server with the highest power consumption and try to uh, reduce from that servers. So uh, you can have mixed different type of servers, of course, yes. And actually, the result will be better than uh, by single servers. Yes. Hi, thank you for the presentation. I have a question. So how often do you need to run this uh, prediction modeling? Because the power consumption of the servers would change when you are scheduling some workload. Mm -hmm. And have you actually measured that this, how much power is this modeling uh, itself is consuming? Uh, I think uh, your first question is uh, how often. So we hope to, uh, we are still in the simulation uh, stage. So um, the design of 
uh, run this uh, workload optimization is based on, I think uh, currently we focus on every one minute. So if uh, we can queue that test in one minute and uh, we will process the one minute by every minute to allocate the, those tests to most appropriate uh, edge site. Yeah. Uh, do you have second question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just uh, also interested to know if you have measured that how much of these uh, uh, prediction modeling that you are actually doing, uh, how much itself it actually uh, consumes the power, the, the whole modeling. How much server? How, how much uh, power uh, the modeling itself is actually consuming? Because if you are running it in a Kubernetes node, mm -hmm. it itself is consuming power, right? So. Oh, uh, how much additional power? Um, yes, good question. So the, the power prediction model is actually calculated the total power consumption of that, from that server. So everything is including, uh, even though we run the, uh, on, in the Kubernetes, the extra uh, marginal power consumption is also included in, in our prediction models. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yes. Thank you for your research. This is very important for the world in the future. Um, given that we're Kubernetes practitioners, and we don't necessarily have the same sensors and setup that you have. Are there any general uh, takeaways that we can use to be more environmentally friendly in our scheduling? For example, is it better to use fewer nodes at lower consumption levels, or is it better to tighter pack onto to nodes and use them at their max capacity? Have you, have you noticed any trends like that? OK, so your first question is the, the first. It, the server sensor is not you don't have it right right so right. In, in my day-to-day -day work i don't mm -hmm. have access to your your algorithm or your your sensors i'm asking are there any general principles that you've noticed from the data that can allow me to be a more responsible user of energy so actually the challenge part is um in each different server you need to build a model so my server will be different from your server in, of course and so this is idea if your company has different edge site and of course you probably will buy a couple different type of server then you can build that server and if you have many different edge site and that can be applied so still there is not have like a, you need still need to build your own server by yourself. So the implementation does not including the has example, but not not uh, should be not suitable for your your case. You need to build your own machine learning models by yourself. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, thank you very much for the research. Yeah, uh, sounds uh, amazing actually. Thank you. Um, I have a question, maybe maybe I missed that in the presentation, but your optimizer is uh, in this research in this in this data, was it using new workloads being added in in your like a model for, for, for in, in your data generation essentially, right when you're generating workloads, or is it just recalculating existing workloads and moving them around? And what's the impact of that? If, if there's like new workloads being added, or if there's oh, a, you mean reshuffling the, the going new, on, the new workload coming. Yes. Yeah. So every new workload coming will recalculate the uh, increasing of power consumption. So, for example, sometimes, uh, for example, uh, ten workload. Uh, has this amount, but the after 11 to 20 will be have large. So every workload coming will do the calculations for each server. Yes, yes. And, and is there reshuffling going on in this case? So uh, existing workloads which are already running, let's say, on some hot sector in the data center, would they be shuffled out to no, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So existing workload will, be, when it finish, it will recalculate. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. So if there's no question, I will end here. Thank you very much.